It's Nolan. Yeah, Jay Nolan here. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Industry, your number one source for music, entertainment, commentary, and breakdowns. Y'all already know your boy is still recovering, you know what I'm saying? But I'm here, we talking, you know what I'm saying? So about another day or so, we're going to be back in the mix. This nasty, nasally version of my voice is going to be gone, you know what I'm saying? And we're going to be back in business. But, uh, you know, in the time of me going through my, my issue... I saw that uh, Joe Budden and uh, Young Miami have gotten into the crosshairs. DJ Academics is now in the crosshairs in this same situation. We're going to cover it. We're going to go over everything that transpired. Not everything that transpired. We're going to do an overview of everything that transpired. I'll say that much. But basically, um, you know, Joe Budden recently interviewed um ll cool j on the podcast which i thought was fly as fuck um i'm still waiting on that episode to officially drop i'm not a member of the joe budden patreon so i haven't seen it yet but the clips that i've seen online um look really good ll has been doing different press he sat down with charlemagne he sat down with some other uh platforms you know gearing up for the release of his uh new album he's got new singles out and all of that is great. You know what I'm saying? He seems to be energized about music all over again. This this round definitely looks a lot better on him than the last round of when he put out the music and he was uh what was the song he put out accidental racist and shit like that. That wasn't a gleaming moment. 2024 looked good on LL. You know, but nonetheless, you know, uh of course LL is like the launching pad of Def Jam as a label. And as the launching pad and as somebody who's still affiliated with Def Jam today, he's not signed there no more. Um, Joe Budden was also signed to Def Jam once upon a time. So he brought Joe his uh, gold plaque for his hit single, Pump It Up. You know, and, you know, we saw over the course of the last eight to ten months or something like that, that. His, his song was literally um, certified gold. I think it might be platinum now. So we already knew that that was the thing, but he didn't expect to get his plaque. So LL comes and hand delivers it to Joe, you know, and that's always been the song that everybody likes to make fun about, you know, use it to their humor you know what I'm saying? Basically, throw it in his face. Nigga, shut the fuck up. You made Pump It Up. Pump It Up is actually a very catchy record. Pump It Up is actually a very fun song if you're in the right setting when that bitch come on. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure a lot of people got a little bit of, you know what I'm saying? If you was in a dance-off, you know what I'm saying? If you was that type of motherfucker, you might have got a little action to pump it up. So, you know, motherfuckers might have poured out some motherfucker. you know, during that time period motherfuckers were probably pouring up hypnotic and shit <laughs> whoa nonetheless um he received a lot of congrats on the internet he received some some laughter on the internet and one of those people that laughed was young miami now young miami source of laughter for joe getting pumped it up i believe originates off of you know when everything went shaky between Young Miami and Diddy, Joe Budden basically came out and played Another One Bites the Dust. Now, this is something that Joe does on the podcast pretty often. When things um, don't go right in different, uh, especially with other podcasters in the field or just big celebrities, you know, when he, when he detects that something's like, inauthentic or not real or you know that the uh the facade is soon to come crashing down and he kind of predicts it it comes to fruition he'll play another one bites the dust because he feels like he saw it coming the whole time anyway and he feels confirmed in whatever that um you know admission is so young miami played the back played it cool and was like all right bet <laughs> 
Another one bites the dust. Okay. Oh, I see you got your low, you got your low gold plaque, the only plaque of your career. Okay. That's what's up. <laughs> so she's so she laughed. You know? And um Joe Budden was a little bit confused on why she was laughing, but he was like, ah, oh, it's too easy for me to really go in on you. But at least via Twitter. But of course. The get back, the get back was gotten back. I, I got to, I, baby got back. <laughs> the nigga held no punches and, and for the most part was respectful. You know what I'm saying? Now, for some people out there, uh, somebody was in my comments and was like, hey man, you kind of getting into some of these subjects a little late. Yeah, I, I've addressed that. Your boy, he's recovering. But the good thing about me getting to some of these subjects late is that I've been able to watch the stories as they develop so that I could talk about what happened a few days ago and I can give the resolution or the latest update to the story as things developed over the last few days. Right. Cause then there's the, the other side of it that we're going to get into with academics in Miami and they've had a history that goes back anyway. Right. So Joe's confused. Oh, you want to laugh? Okay, bet. <laughs> Dock it. Also, during this time period, over the weekend, I saw somebody had posted that um, even though Young Miami was laughing at Joe, they posted a side-by-side -side of their monthly listeners on Spotify, and Joe Button actually receives more Spotify plays per month than Young Miami does. Now, I thought that was interesting, but you got to also take into account that's not City Girls, that's Young Miami. I think Joe gets somewhere around 700000 a month. I think Young Miami was somewhere around, what was it, a hundred k per month in streams? And we're just talking about the amount of streams. We're not talking about money. Yeah, Young Miami, 195,000 streams monthly. Joe Budden, 781,000 monthly listeners, right? He was a solo artist most of his career. If you want to look at the streams that his group gets, Slaughterhouse, I'm sure they do well also, right? From the hip hop heads. And again, I have the luxury of being here to pull it up. Let's see how Slaughterhouse streams monthly with no album out in damn near a decade even they get 187,000 monthly listeners so they're barely behind a young Miami and they ain't put out an album in a decade let me pull up City Girls they get 3 million monthly listeners though so that's that's holding up with Full catalog, right? But the person on Twitter, they wanted to uh, point out individual stats, right? Anyway, so I saw that that was a thing. Joe Budden then goes to his podcast and speaks on the situation. We're about to pull up the audio for that. His response to her laughing at him, because I believe uh, Young Miami was basically saying, you know, that song came out when I was maybe 16 years old, something like that. I guess she was basically trying to say it took you damn near 15 years to go gold, nigga. Congratulations. <laughs> you got to really be prepared if you're going at this guy here. Love him, hate him. That mic he got on that couch, on that white couch, the nigga know how to use that motherfucker to perfection. <laughs> He's he, It's a lot of motherfuckers out here. With these weak ass podcasts doing their best Joe Button impression. You know what I'm saying? Some of these relationship podcasts and shit that you'll see clips going viral all over the place. The niggas is doing their best Joe Button, Cam Newton type style. Get the fuck out of here, boy. Let's hear what these niggas had to say, though. Also, 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 it has come to my attention that a few of you people out there think that it's key key time 
Because LL came and brought me my gold plaque for Bump It Up. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get to it, nigga. Open the door. I'm a little slow. How slow? So I'm the last to know that there are a few of you out there that are laughing at that gesture. And I want to be clear. Everybody can laugh. If you sit up here and you dish it, you have to be able to take it. Mm -hmm. I stand in that. I have said a bunch of shit about a bunch of people. My actions are not exonerated at all here. I am clear on why people fire at me and I'm willing to stand there. But to the people that know me just a tad bit better, there's absolutely nothing you could say to make me think that LL Cool J bringing me my pump it up gold plaque to my fucking triple, triple platinum or whatever quadruple platinum podcast is an L. Hey, if, if pump it up sold one copy and LL walked in here <laughs> and said, hey, here's your one copy you sold and I want to sit down on your platform and talk to you. The hip hop head that I am would take that to be the biggest of W's because of my queen's background and because of who I deem LL Cool J to be. Now, while we all can laugh, and if there's anybody that I hope would be laughing, it is uh, young Miami with all that she has had to endure in the past year or so. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I want to be clear, I like young, young Miami. I do. I want to be honest here. And I think that she is a pretty good content creator. What we do up here sometimes when things end as a ritual is to play Another One Bites the Dust. It's me. I'll take it. I'm a dick. I think it's funny. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I just think it's a cool little segment when shit goes awry. Uh, I don't play it to personally attack anyone. And while I talk to Carisha, I, I'm, I'm not going to personally attack her because she is allowed to laugh. And I like her. I think she is funny. I think she is great. Yada, yada, yada. Qualify, 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 qualify. The thing about laughter, I think that she will soon realize is it's also a luxury. Laughter, I say all the time, laughter is good for the soul. Slash, the flip side of that, laughter is also a privilege. So while I'm happy that Carisha is able to laugh because she's had a stressful year, I am a little surprised that she has found enough time to laugh at anything. I'm not going to call you out of your name. I'm not going to be personal. I'm not going to be disrespectful. I want to keep this professional and on the music. If Complex were to do a list of where all the female rappers rate, Carisha, you would be last on the list. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, man, that nigga warmed you. <laughs> This nigga warmed up your your bread and biscuits in the oven for four minutes, just buttered them, glazed them, right? <laughs> nigga glazed the shits, the buns, and then threw your shit on an unlimited heat broiler. Boom! Headshot immediately. You are the worst. You dead last of all the women. Rapping today. God damn. And the nigga ain't telling no lies. I fuck with young Miami, but let's not act like I fuck with her because of her bars. I think she has a, a, a marketable personality. You know? I think she still will be successful, you know, long as it doesn't come out that she was feeding women into uh, traffic. You know what I'm saying? If you was doing that, your ass need to be in jail. But, you know what I mean? 
if 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 everything goes smoothly with that, I think she'll continue to have a, success, a successful career because she does know how to how to you know what I mean maneuver. She knows how to you know talk her way in the rooms clearly, um, and use you know the look with the personality, with the snappiness. You know what I'm saying? Give you that around the way girl vibe. And she's elevated it, you know, as, as far as her fashion is concerned and stuff like that. So she's, a, uh, you know what I mean, what they like to call her as an influencer of sorts. She's stuck. She can't put music out, so they say. So she's selling items. And her fans buy her shit when she puts them on the market. Like the Carisha's Closet shit that she was doing was selling. Can't, can't act like it went. But damn, that nigga went for the head. That nigga went for the head immediately. Like, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All that good stuff. Set up the scene. Brah. You would be drop dead last on that list. Every female out there is wiping you down right now. And to the people that are lost, I'm saying this because uh, Carisha put the laughing emojis over LL handing me my pump it up gold plaque and do i believe pump it up to be a gold record no and do i believe that everybody in the lunchroom can laugh at something that may be funny no <laughs> <laughs> no most of the lunchroom could get a good chuckle but carisha was the very last person i expected to do this and before i before i get off it I, i've been pulling up y'all remember the uh the billboard top 10 females female rappers of 2024 that came out uh, not not that long ago, a couple months. Remember, Young Miami actually wasn't on it at all. Number 10 on the list was Flo Millie. Number nine was JT. Her <laughs> former best friend, former group mate, at least made the list number nine. Young Miami, she must have been in Miami. When they considered the list, cause uh, she didn't make the cut. They said she had Flo Millie out here doing better than did better than her. Shout out to Flo. She is a better rapper. I mean, it is the truth. But I don't know if Flo got the same accolades as uh, City Girls. But you know, City Girls is over. JT came out, dropped a hit record, I guess, or a, a semi hit record. She made the list, made the cut. Carisha, not only may you be dropped from your label right now, but you are not allowed to talk. put music out. There's nothing happening. I want to remind you that today I hear Pump It Up more than I hear you. Damn. So while you go on these social media rants and say that you were nine years old with Pump It Up dropped and now you're 30, you should be cautious of that. Because your record label today is saying to you that they're not seeing any growth. Self-admittedly, the only talent that you have possessed in recent years is providing emotion, yet you're at a standstill. Hey, man, that nigga don't rap, but the nigga's still a word. So you, you provided an emotion, but you at a standstill. That nigga on your ass, baby girl. Eloquently, though. I'm not talking city girls. I'm talking you. And that's my problem when it comes to current modern acts and the caricatures that you be. Like, I view you as a science project. And I'm not talking city girls because I'm a fan of city girls. And I'm on JT's side in the breakup. But I love City Girls, and City Girls has accomplished a few. No, for real, JT <laughs> came up here, hair flowing. He's amazing. She's like, amazing. Like, like, stop for a minute. Beautiful. I ain't stupid. I got I to gotta try to read between some of the social media shit. JT came up here skin glowing, hair glowing, knee-high boots with a staff mm -hmm. that didn't look cheap. She, mm -hmm. did. she came up here talking that talk. She came up here with music circulating and everybody, and everybody up here absolutely loved her yes here's the kicker jt also has a nigga with all the money in the world right he ain't a billionaire though. jt is with somebody 
I fuck with JT. Throw the phone at that bitch at the award show, nigga. <laughs> yeah, nigga. <laughs> I'm repping for mine. <laughs> JT got a nigga that got all the money in the world. And still, when the odds were against her, got to it. She got to it. For sure. She got to work. Niggas laughed. Oh, you doing a small venue, Joe. Oh, you flop. Oh, yeah. She came up here and got real. Yo, our last project, it wasn't the greatest. And I had to go back to the drawing board and really find myself. I don't think Carisha has the time. I don't think she has the time to laugh when it appears that she is going through an identity crisis. And that right there be my problem with y'all. I've seen y'all. I am very familiar with this type. I'm familiar with the type that think they became the dick that they helped came. I'm very familiar with the bitches that think they have bloomed into who they consume. Hey, yo. Oh, wow. Was you good. was running around here and you gave JT your ass to kiss. You sat there with Saucy Santana, who even raps better than your ass. And gave JT your ass to kiss. You said, I'm dating a billionaire now. Fuck that city girl shit. I'm off of it. We not making no money. I'm donezo here. You told Shorty Dua, you told uh, Homeboy's ex uh, that if you felt like it, you could get uh, Homeboy to get her on all fours and start sucking some dick or barking like a dog or some shit. You also told Homegirl that because her carpet was fucked up, she was broke. And now when, when you start with me, you want to say protect black women. I don't want to hear none of that shit. You are the worst female rapper out there currently, and you don't write your own shit. These are science projects put together by people and companies with the best of the best surrounding them for them to get further. But as a standalone, nothing's ever happened. When JT went to jail, you kicked that shit. Yo, I got to wait for it. The wait for it looks different now. Nothing was popping. You were on arguably one of the greatest fucking labels to ever exist next to who I would say is the second best group to ever come out of Atlanta. Mm. Yet you still find yourself in this position. You was running around talking big, 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 big shit. And I'm not mad. What I'm mad at is that you tucked whatever you was mad at. Like whatever I said that 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 drove you that 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 drove you the wrong way or hurt your feelings, you tucked it until you saw like an opportune time, and somehow me getting a plaque is the opportune time to get your shit off. I don't really understand it, but I also don't think that you are the lawnmower with a steering wheel. Sheesh. This nigga said, I don't think you're the lawnmower with a steering wheel, bruh. And it wasn't it wasn't disrespectful. He j- <laughs> what I say last time? Say that this song is a real song. Shit got too real. And I gotta be honest, it is kind of weird to laugh at somebody's musical career when you're at a place where you can't even put no music out. Your label is your your label. You came out and admitted to the world. Hey, kudos to your vulnerability. You admit it to the world. Your label is listening to your music and saying no. Right? We've seen artists come out and say that the label is not accepting the music. That wasn't nothing new. That wasn't revolutionary or, you know, eye-opening. What was eye-opening to me is that in the next breath, you you admit it. Them niggas said, we see no growth in you. That's the part we ain't heard before. Yeah, there's plenty of artists that done went to the label with albums complete and niggas said, no. You ain't got a single. You don't have, you know what I'm saying? You need to fine tune it. You need better production. Nah, they say, we see no growth in you. You keep making the same shit. This is not worth getting behind. <clears throat> That's crazy. And then your fo- your former partner is out here getting ready to tour. Now the to tour, huh? I saw I saw a video of, of JT on tour. JT, what's going on? You had so much going for you this year. That clip I seen, hold on.
big dog, you look like you was at a talent show. This, this video ain't about you. Kudos to the success. Kudos to, you know what I'm saying, solo album. Kudos to solo tour. Kudos to everything. Jeezy feature, getting bubbling. You bubbled up. You know what I'm saying? Whole shit. Dope. You looked like you was at a talent show. At that, sh at that stop. But anyway. At least JT has the opportunity to look like she's doing talent shows. And Miami is still figuring out like, shit. How do I sign up for the talent show? <laughs> Hey, yo, that's fucked up. Your group mate is in the talent show. You like, shit, man, can I sign up? Can I audition? No. <laughs> that's fucked up. Yeah, man. And it's not looking like it's going to be great for you because who's writing for you now? You know what I'm saying? Who, is it Skiller Baby? Is he writing your shit now? Like... Saucy Santana ain't going to write your shit now. You ain't going to go back to Yachty. Like, this is, the, this is the thing. I'm not even like the anti-ghostwriter thing. I, I could never be anti-ghostwriter. What I do outside of YouTube, a lot of the money I make that pays bills in my home is ghostwriting for niggas. I could never be anti-ghostwriter. But what do you do? When you're now a big artist, a big enough artist to consider yourself a household name. And all of your help, all of your, you know, assistance has been pulled from uh, from around you. You know, the member of the group that could actually rap has stepped away. The label's not supporting nothing that you bring to the table. We don't know who's going to write for you. You have a, a, a highly decorated podcast talk show that has a grand total of, what, 10 episodes? And it's been in production for three years or more? You got to get out here and really get to it, especially if you want to stay in the conversation. Let a, You know, and I'm not the man, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Not angry. I don't covet her position. All I'm going to say is, let a nigga like myself, who's already doing this shit on my own, have an opportunity to get it like that. <laughs> Y'all, this will be a going on a cool J run, like my nigga Murder Moot said. Right? And it ain't just specific to me. It's other niggas out here that get to it, get busy with the pen and with the commentary and content production. Curtis King, shout out my nigga. You know what I'm saying? It's some other ones out here that's doubling doing music and commentary. Yo, you put anybody that's out here self-sustained and put the same resources that somebody like a young Miami had behind them, shit would look totally different. The profit margins would look totally different, even independently. But, you know, salute. So in the midst of all this transpiring, um, you get... DJ Academics, who's out here alleging that Young Miami really has been dropped from QC. It hasn't been announced yet. It has not been, you know, confirmed by QC, nor has Young Miami came out and said that she's dropped from the label. But this is something that Academics has said multiple times in the past week or so. Um, I only know this. I don't watch his streams, but I see clips going viral on Twitter. My, algor my algorithm is tailored towards music topics so anything music drake kendrick joe budden all of that shit all the uh viral pages that shit stays in my algorithm now on twitter so he's been saying she's been dropped um and basically trying to tailor the story to she is no longer welcome over there they see no value in her blah 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 He's even alleged that there's um, footage of her sounding like a train wreck in the studio. I don't know none of that to be true. Right? So, 
with all of that taking place, he comes out, does a stream, and basically uh, doubles down on everything that Joe Budden already said. I don't feel like Joe needed, you know, backup from some from a from another, um, you know, another like force in this space to like jump on her. You know what I'm saying? Joe Joe said his shit. Joe, you know what I mean? Especially given their history, especially given everything that he got going on surrounding him, you know, as it pertains to women, we're just going to say that because we're not, we're not harping on his situation today. Um, he jumps in. So young Miami then says, you know what? The next season of Carisha, please. Why don't you come on the show? Why don't you come sit down with me? Let's hear your perspective and I can share mine. All perspectives deserve to be heard. Now, there's some people online that feel like she's lining him up. Right. Because it wasn't that long ago. That young Miami and Saucy Santana wanted to jump this nigga. Right. Wasn't that long ago, they was trying to figure out how to how to link up, put hands, feet, purse, paws, everything on this nigga. Um, you know, he 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 got so much in, in a rage, he he was brought to tears because he couldn't say anything um even remotely, you know, as a slur towards Saucy Santana. So do I think that all of that is one water under the bridge now? I don't know. You might not want to show up. Right? Unless you're going to show up with some security. <laughs> Unless you're going to show up with some security detail, brother. Shit. What, where, where do they even shoot, uh, Carisha, please? Is that done in Miami? You go out there and them zoes is ready to put them foes on your... Uh, ready to put some bows on your motherfucking... <laughs> Niggas is ready to do some tight bow out that bit, man. I don't know if you want to. I don't. I don't know. I don't know, man. Shit, boy. Didn't didn't uh, man? Don't they be shooting nigga cars up out that bit, man? Ain't ain't major rappers done got their cars shot up out there? I don't know, brother. You know. But if they can, if they can somehow make it happen, it would be entertaining. I don't think she needs to platform him in that way. Um, personally, I think she, if she really wants to have that conversation, she could just have the conversation. It, it's interesting content, you know, she can monetize on it. So that does make sense. It's going to get views. It's going to do numbers. It's going to be money there um, so that she could have another episode in the can. I think she definitely is in need of guests to come on that show. Um, I don't know how long she's under contract, but she says there's another season in, in the works. And we already got the first episode when she came out and talked about the Diddy situation. So that does make some sort of sense to me. And perhaps they'll wait till you get your whole shit done. Interview over. And we bust, and we busting your ass. Yeah, we kept it cool. We kept it clean. Now, let's show you. Let, who was that? Was that Asian doll on Fresh and Fit where she was finna shoot the club up? Yeah, look, let me show you what that looked like down here, my nigga. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying how it could go. I ain't saying it's how it should go. Just saying it's how it could. Okay? Now, when it comes to this rumor of her being dropped, again, we don't know that it's real. And we don't know if she's if let's say, let's just say she's not on QC no more since uh coming out doing the Carisha Speaks episode cuz I'm sure that was a conversation that she had to have with uh coach KMP you know to come out in in a public forum and say my label's not accepting my music I can't do nothing they don't like my music they seeing no growth they not they they my hands are tied you know even the couple fans that I do have that's waiting on my shit I can't do nothing Right. I, I play music for y'all on, on Instagram. Some people were excited. Some people didn't like it. But those that were excited, my hand is tied. I'm sure they was like, yo, what the fuck? That was private matters. All you got to do is bring us a record. 
Don't put pressure on us in public. Just bring us the heat. Bring us the pressure. So, you know, maybe she says, yo, I feel like y'all favoring old girl over there. Y'all putting all the money, the resources, the time. Y'all did a whole campaign, built her up, right? Y'all haven't come and sat with me to really figure out where my direction is going. Y'all don't want to build me up, right? Because I still maintain JT could go off and do trap music. She could go be goddamn Diamond and Princess from Crime Mob if that's who she wants to be. You know what I'm saying? She could go be whatever. And it's working. Young Miami don't got to change nothing. She can be the city girl. She could be Trina 2.0 if that's what it is. Now, we know she ain't as good as Trina. I'm not saying that because I know we always going to have the technicality technicals in the comments. She'll never be Trina. Why would you say that? Come on, dog. You know what I mean. The bad is <laughs> party music, club music, ratchetivity. I also know that Trina elevated and matured into a different style of music later on. We're talking about the era we cared about. Okay. So. She shouldn't have to make no different music because that music that they were making was her lifestyle. Why would she make different music? She's a club girl. If the allegations in Lil Rod's lawsuit are anywhere remotely close to how she living, it's sex, drugs, alcohol, hip hop. <laughs> like, yeah, it's time for the twerking later. I don't even like that song, but shit. Act up, act bad, all that shit. She should keep making that. They say, we don't see no growth. Fuck out of here. <laughs> so they may have let her go. Like, shit, you a lost cause. You could go. Maybe she asked, like, yo, how about if y'all don't want to keep me here, y'all don't want to help me sustain the rest of my career, y'all don't see the potential, let me go off and do it myself. Let me go be independent for a minute or let me go scout another deal for myself. Let me go test the water, see what my value is you know, elsewhere. Maybe she might still be under contract f through the, uh, the parent label. You know what I'm saying? Even if QC let her go, she may still have to stick around at what, what is it? Uh, capital. Let me, uh, confirm this real quick. Yeah. Capital. Which is under the Universal Motown umbrella. Cool. So, yeah. They might could let her go. Let her just go straight through him. Or they could, because that's what's going on with, with Offset when he went and did solo shit. Right? No longer QC, but still re re remain solo deal with uh, Universal Motown. Capital. Same shit. Or... All you motherfuckers could drop me and she could go fuck with uh Empire. Let uh Hitmaker produce an album for her. I think he got 12 slaps for Young Miami sitting in a hard drive right now that could turn her up next year. This year sit down. Let the let the let all the lava dry up in 2024. Lock in with a nigga like Hitmaker. Which is going, you know, hey, the, the remake sample shit is dead, nigga. You could tap into sounds without fucking remaking, okay? Get you some other niggas. Nonetheless, I think he would be an ideal candidate to like lock in with and do something different that's outside of whomever she been working with. He'll, he'll turn her up. Now, I don't know what his terms would be. Hopefully, it's not you got to, you know, be my new girlfriend or no shit like that on some tink shit. But uh, you just never know in this crazy ass industry. She might be going from bad to bad to next next to the worst. Fucking with him. You know. But yeah. 
we'll we'll see where it goes from there. You know what I mean? She's allegedly going to do an interview with academics where they talk about the situation, especially if he's saying that she's dropped and she says, well, I would love to share my perspective or my side of the story. I think she's got more information. If she were to be dropped, I think she definitely, well, no, definitely. Uh, I think she probably wouldn't have spoke on it, honestly. So there's got to be something worth revealing there, but we shall see. Will it even, by the time they have this conversation, how soon are they going to set it up? How soon is this episode going to drop? Are we still going to be here for this story uh, come September, October? I don't know. I don't think so. Right? So if y'all ain't making that move like today, I don't know. Let me know what y'all think of all this down below in the comments. Let me know what y'all would like to see from Young Miami moving forward. Let me know what y'all think of Joe Budden's response to her laughing at his Joe but uh, uh, his pump it up plaque, right? And I'm gonna catch y'all a little bit later. All right, much love and respect. I'm gonna see y'all in a minute. Be sure to like and share the video. Peace. King of my city in Kodasak Coming out swinging like soldier rags Leading my people like quarterback Boy, I study this shit, I'm an almanac Had to get up and grind Knowledge is booming, I'm here to apply Came with the chip and the dip It just single the mind We finna do more to survive I need my check Spinning the block for the gouda We hitting the jeweler to flood out the net We don't do beef on computers so I'm straight out the sewer We come when you rest Niggas be looking perplexed So keeping my foot on their neck No map, I trust my gut for the quest With drama, I'm fully abreast I was ready for years and they died of me All of a sudden they tell me they proud of me I have been dropping these haters like calories Cross my I came back with some battle, we stand for my honor, but you run no gunner, packing a stick with a drummer. Wanna catch my bad one fumble? I done came too far to be humble.